this is a fan. It's a blower. It's a Dayton blower. And it's, um, how many CFMs is this? Well, we'll have to tell you how many CFMs, so I can't read it. Looks like it says 50, but I'm not sure. Anyway, um, here's the switch. Turns it on and off. The blower goes down into the ribbon burner. In here, there's a static air mixer. We'll talk about that later. This is the propane input. The propane comes out of this little MIG welding tip. I think this is an 035 welding tip that has been threaded into a piece of quarter inch pipe. I had to plug the end of the pipe, drill it and tap it for the threads on the MIG tip. And this is a quick disconnect that's specially made for propane. I get it from my propane supplier. That's about it. To easily remove the whole fan assembly, that's all it takes to remove the fan from the forge. So you can use this assembly on multiple forges, just not simultaneously. This is the fuel nozzle assembly. Here you can see the regulator and all the parts for the nozzle assembly. The parts include a propane quick disconnect, a quarter inch coupling, a quarter inch nipple by six inches long, and a MIG tip. Make sure to use a rated propane quick disconnect. And the MIG tip is a .035 or a 9mm MIG tip. We made our own six inch pipe nipple, starting with some quarter inch steel pipe. Here you can see threading the end of the pipe to a quarter inch pipe thread so that it will fit into the pipe adapter. This pipe threader was my grandfather's and when I put the quarter inch pipe die on here for threading, it's probably the first time it's been used for quarter inch threading in at least 75 years. If you start with a six inch steel pipe nipple from the hardware store, you merely have to cut the threads from one end of the pipe before proceeding to the next step in the process and plugging the end of the pipe that you just cut the threads off of. Here you can see the steel pipe is being prepared to receive the MIG tip. A piece of 3 8 bar was chamfered on the end and driven into the end of the pipe until it was flush. This bar was then welded into place with a stick welder and the weld was rough ground on a belt sander to smooth out the surface before mounting in a lathe, facing the end of the bar and drilling a hole to prepare for threading in order to thread in the MIG tip on the end of the pipe. Here you can see the pre-drilled hole and the threaded ends of the pipe ready for the assembly. I got a different quick release valve here. Same concept as the other one. Except on the back here it's got a little ball valve in it. So the ball valve is incorporated and the handle to the ball valve acts as a lock so that when the propane is open and flowing you can't quick release 
but you can shut off the propane quick release out the other end as well as it comes with a neat little cap to close off your propane line This piece laid out here are all the parts for the blower assembly. This is the 50 CFM Dayton blower. This is a weld on inch and a half pipe flange. Really simple sleeves over onto the inch and a half pipe. Really easy to weld on. I will have to modify a couple of these bolt holes for the Dayton blower but since I already had to get the 90 degree elbow it was a simple additional purchase at the welding supply. So some inch, two pieces of inch and a half pipe is three inches long and this piece of pipe is two and a half. So this is to for a setup to run with propane. The Abana plans talk about running this setup with a natural gas line in which case you have to have a longer distance from where the natural gas is introduced into the air to before the burner. I believe in those plans it lists it as 18 inches between fuel mix with the air and the burner location. So here with the this setup it works well for propane. So here in the corner is a 90 degree elbow. It has had a hole milled into the end in order to receive a piece of pipe. What this pipe does is it acts as the mounting bracket for the propane nozzle. So this piece of pipe sleeves into the elbow here like so and we'll have a set screw attached here in order to hold the, no the fuel line nozzle in. To show you this is a piece of the fuel line nozzle that will sleeve in here and will be held in the center of the of this pipe assembly for the introduction of propane into the fuel to air mixture. Next down the line here on this last piece of pipe will be these two mounting tabs that will be welded onto the piece of pipe and they have set screws which fit onto this mo modified merchant coupling. By having this merchant coupling with the set screwed tabs onto the blower assembly and the, with the fuel line coming in here it makes it so that the blower assembly and fuel line is modular and can be changed between forges. I, have, I will have two forges at the end of this build. One is a larger forge that I will not use as often and another is a smaller propane forge that will, I will use more regularly. And since I will, do not plan to use them both simultaneously, it makes sense for me, economy-wise, to spend the money for just one setup for a blower and all of the fittings for the fuel line. So that being said, you can design your own blower system a little bit differently in order if you do not need the modular capability. The last thing I've set out here is a normal light switch that is wired into the blower so that you, because the blower requires power and having the switch in order to turn the blower on and off is nice so you can leave it plugged in. What I'll be working on here is welding this nut and thumb screw onto this piece of pipe where the burner no, or the fuel nozzle will enter and this whole assembly will then be welded into this 90 degree elbow which is part of the blower assembly so I'll take you through building that then I tacked the nut to the piece of the pipe as best on center as I could and drilled measure drilled the pilot hole for this thread size through here and next I will Put the tap in and it will be started already by the nut and then align really nicely through the hole which I just drilled and I'll have the additional threads through the wall of the pipe and this set screw will come all the way through and help hold in 
the fuel line assembly. So what I've done here is I took a series of hole saws and cut out um, just a, a jig so that the tip of the MIG tip will be centered and the piece of pipe will fit on here roughly centered. I can load her down get that MIG tip to sit in that center hole then I'll come in with my square make sure things are square and then I can tack in this mounting pipe Pretty well centered up. I was just using simple two sets of hole saws to cut my jig to center the MIG tip in the air assembly. I've gone ahead here and tacked all the parts together for the blower assembly. I've tacked my little tabs with the set screws, the pipe on the back here that receives the, receives the fuel assembly as well as my flange that receives the blower mount. And I've also marked on here, I don't know if you can read that, but this back side is where the motor of the fan assembly will come off the back here based on these mounting holes. That way the motor of the fan assembly is located as far away from the burner as possible. The burner will be down over here and the fan motor assembly will be coming off the back side here just to try to keep it as far away from the heat as possible. So now I'm just going to weld everything up. You want the propane and the air to mix. You want them to mix really well. When I first did this, it wasn't mixing well enough going through the elbow, through the other elbow, and into here. It was getting much hotter on one end of the ribbon burner than the other end of the ribbon burner. And I got some professional advice and a static air mixer was talked about. And that's something that would mix the air in this tube. And this is all it is. As the air comes in, it starts to twist one direction. And then it starts to twist the other direction. And that sets in there and that fixed it. It's now got an even burn down the entire length of the ribbon burner static air mixer. We are taking a threaded coupling, a merchant coupling, and removing the threads halfway down for about an inch on one end so that a plain piece of pipe will fit in. This will be a part of the fan mount. Plain piece of black pipe, inch and a half, slips inside and has a stop. That's what we want. This is the transfer assembly or the mixing assembly. So starting at this end, this is that same modified merchant coupling where the blower assembly hooks into. Then there is a 6 inch pipe nipple, a 90 degree bend, 
and a 3 inch pipe nipple. If you don't have access to merchant couplings, because at this end, this 3 inch nipple threads into a merchant coupling that has been welded onto the ribbon burner manifold assembly. If you don't have access to merchant couplings or don't want to purchase one, an option is to cut a 3 inch nipple in half and weld this section of the nipple onto the manifold assembly so that you can screw the 90 degree angle directly into it. Then you have this six in this six inch assembly is where you insert the static air mixer, which is simply just a couple twisted pieces of sheet metal that have been twisted in opposite directions in order to get the air and propane to mix more evenly and better, which then promotes a more even burn across the face of the ribbon burner. And like as I discussed before, this modified merchant coupling is where the blower assembly fits into and then has set screws that hold on. If you don't want if you don't have an access to a lathe to do this part, you can weld threads onto the 90 degree of the blower assembly or you can build the entire transfer and blower assembly out of screw together pipe fittings and nipples. So there are many options for this. The, it's not an end-all be-all design.